about just going on my name is Ryan and welcome back to a brand new video on HMS you've we'll been using today we are going through the world superbike round number two from Thailand doing a let's talk for that so we're going to get straight into it because I literally don't have long to get this video done so we're going to power through it we've got a few topics to talk about you can see them on the bottom right of your screen that's Jonathan Ray and Kawasaki added back to dominant ways although race two We've seen maybe, maybe not. We've got Red Bull Honda's progress. They've made a lot of progress since last year. We have new electrics for Pata Yamaha. Uh, and just a little discussion about whether or not the rules have actually changed anything in World Superbikes. And then also just a little roundup from the Thailand uh, Grand Prix. So like I said, don't have much time. So let's get straight into it. We're going to start off with uh, the, is Jonathan Ray back now? I made these notes at race one because he won by a good one, two seconds. And I thought, okay, maybe he's gone back to dominant ways, but race two would suggest otherwise. Maybe he had some issues with the bike, the brake issues, I don't really know. But obviously it's a good track for Ray Thailand. Uh, he got uh, a double in 2015 and 2016, picked up one win at Boyram in 2015 on their first time there. He shared the victory with his teammate, Tom Sykes. So Kawasaki have dominated Thailand right up until race two uh, today. So obviously it's always, a bit worrying going into a World Superbike season, knowing that it could be Ray and Kawasaki dominating it. But so far at the moment, it's been three wins for Ducati and one win for Kawasaki, with uh, Melandri and Davies sharing the wins for Ducati, and then Ray picking up the sole win in Thailand Race 1 uh, so far this season. So obviously, like I said, it's a good track for Ray, good track for Kawasaki, because like I said, they won all them races at Buriram and obviously it was the first win of the season for Ray so he might have got that momentum rolling but going into race two things went a little bit pear-shaped for him he started ninth obviously because he won the race and he had the reverse grid and then he went backwards in that race for a bit and then went forwards and then went off the track so I don't know if he had a few issues with the bike or if he was just getting frustrated sat behind Melandri because he was being held up a little bit or what I don't really know but he uh, dropped down into about P8 or something and fought his way back there was a big group of riders at one point all scrapping it out on the straight and he dropped right back to the back of the group uh, so yeah there's always that little bit of worry that is Kawasaki and Ray going to dominate but so far at the moment no but after Thailand race one you would have thought maybe he could have been back there but we'll have to wait and see when the championship goes to Aragon next to see whether or not he dominates there all right, so next we're going to talk about the Red Bull Honda and their progress that they've made so far. So, obviously, the debut track, uh, the debut, well, Thailand's debut on the calendar, let's say that, in 2015. Again, totally managed a P5 and a P6. And on, on average, it was about 20 seconds behind the leader. Now, going into 2016, Michael van der Mark stood on the podium for Honda, finishing, on average, about 7 seconds behind the winner. In 2017, it was obviously a tough year. They had problems with the bike right from the start, right to the end. Then they had the, uh, the obviously, the sad death of Nicky Hayden. And then they also had the injury of Stefan Brado, which really, really just hampered them. And then they got Jake Gagne in, new to all the tracks, new to the bike. And it was just really, just up and down. They had the test rider in World Suit Bikes for uh, the Jerez Grand Prix. The Spanish Grand Prix didn't go well there for him. And uh, in 2017, race one at Thailand, P9 and P10, 33 seconds and 35 seconds behind P1. And so far in 2018, this is the results that Leon Kami has achieved on the Honda. A P7 in the Australian race one, a P6 in the Australian race two, a P4 in uh, the first race of the Thailand weekend, 0.8 behind the factory Ducati, and also grabbed a P7 in the second race in Thailand. You just need to make sure that's correct because I haven't filled in that part. No, P6, sorry, P6 in Thailand ahead of uh, Factory Ducati, who, well, a double race winner, Marco Melandri. So, obviously, they've been working really, really hard. They have uh, the old uh, electronics. PJ, da PJ J Jacobson, sorry, on the satellite bike, you would say. He's got um, Magneti Morelli electronics in. Camio went off to Spain and tested those, and he's not quite got them yet. But there is talks of the championship going into a controlled ECU where everybody has the same spec ECU with the same, you know, kind of components and everything like that. And they will be Magneti Morelli. So they're focusing for that. So they've got PJ on the Magneti Morelli to make sure that they are ready for that when it comes in. So they have a bit of backup data to then push into the Red Bull Honda squad. So obviously Camia and uh, Red Bull Honda, they've kind of brought the bike back to basics, back to the level that it was when they were inside the top five quite consistently when they had Gintoli and Van der Mark on the bike. Um, and also Johnny Ray as well when he was on Patia 
Honda Superbike team and they bought the bike back to basics and that's what they needed. I think they went they just went too far into the like, development to try and just get the bike up top and it all went a bit wrong. They lost their way, they started going down the wrong paths with the bike and that and Cameo's just brought it right back to basics, started from the beginning and it's working because he's fighting for podiums, he's fighting for uh, pole position, he's got a front row in Thailand on merit and he was fighting inside the top five on merit in Thailand as well. So very, very good start to 2018 for Red Bull Honda. Obviously, it's still a bit early to see whether or not they are 100% going to be at the front every single race. But obviously, now we're into the, the proper momentum of the season. The long month break between round one and round two is over. So now we've got to start getting into the groove and getting into it with the 2018 season. So it's all going to be kind of interesting to see whether or not Kawasaki are going to dominate or Red Bull Honda are going to keep that progress up, or if they're going to drop away in the middle of the season. Now, uh, another team who have brand new electronics that they've been testing is Yamaha. They actually had it for the weekend. Race one, they were just still probably trying to just sort it all out and everything, but race two, it definitely worked because they were both on the podium and P2 for Vandermark and P3 for Alex Lowe. So, very, very promising let's say, promising start to the 2018 season for the Yamahas. A little bit of issues in Australia, but then Thailand with the new electronics on the podium, no problems beating, uh, you know, Ray Melandri, the, the championship leader Ray, and then the, the double race winner in Australia, uh, Melandri. So 2017, we're going back to 2017, using a lot of stats from back in 2017. They finished 11 seconds and 14 seconds behind. So that was the two riders. 2018 race one, Alex Lowe's uh, finished P5, just seven seconds off P1, and uh, P7 for Vandermark, 8.5 seconds off. So, obviously, in race two, they were about two seconds off and about four seconds off or something like that. So, they really cut that down. Now, I don't know if that's something to do with the electronics or if it was just because they had a better grid positions, but I would particularly say it was the electronics. They have nailed the electronics for race two, and they were able to fight at the front. You know, they led the race for a good six, seven, eight, nine laps before then Van der Mark came through um, to pass Lowe's and then he started pulling away and then Davies come through and then uh, passed them and then he bolted off away. So obviously, like I said, going into the weekend, we want to be fighting for the podiums and that's what they've done. They have more factory support from Yamaha in Japan. So they have, you know, more um, knowledgeable people. They have the top people in the garage there. They would probably normally be at MotoGP. Now, Yamaha has gone, okay, we can see potential in this bike and the riders. Let's start bringing in some more high personnel into there and just see what we can do with that. And boom, two podiums uh, for uh, Yamaha with Vandermark and Lowe's in race number two. Now, the next little uh, topic that I want to really quickly talk about is the new rules. Have they actually changed anything? Now, the new rules, if you haven't seen the video that we did, you can go and watch that and uh, listen to all the new rules a bit more in detail. But the new rules are rev limits. So the rev limit can be altered um, through various points throughout the season and applies to each individual manufacturer. So Dorna, uh, the you know the, the big bosses of World well, Bikes can alter the rev limits to make sure that one team doesn't dominate. They can lower their performance of the bike to match everybody else. Um, not fair in my opinion, but... If it makes better racing, it makes better racing. Uh, they also have concessions. Obviously, MotoGP has concessions with Suzuki, KTM and Aprilia, so they can do more development in the season um, and they can basically bring their bike higher up. So concessions, they restrict the engine development of the top machines like K, uh, KRT, Kawasaki, um, Abruba, Ducati, Yamaha, and then the private teams like the Pachetti Racing Kawasaki, uh, the Aralat Kawasaki, um, a few more... Barney Racing Ducati maybe as well because they are the independent in the independent team. They basically have this um, point. Basically, they get access to cost capped engine parts to help them reach the performance level similar to their factory teams. Front and rear suspension and improved engine parts. So price caps and approval processes has been applied for several key frame suspension and engine parts. So everybody has the same sort of level. You know, you can't put one kind of engine part that is superior to everybody else you have to kind of have it level uh, throughout the grid and that obviously has helped now the plan was to bring the racing closer the new rules was to bring the racing closer mix it up a little bit have a few different winners and so far it's I wouldn't say it's worked because out of the four races three Ducatis have won but it makes a change than having Kawasaki's win and all the races so far from round one 
right up to um, the end of round two, the four races that we've had, it has been pretty close. Now, this year, the World Superbike race won. It was probably closer in race two, but um, obviously the race literally finished 10 minutes ago, and I haven't... Um, I don't think the results are up on the World Superbike page. I will have a look whilst I um, talk about race one. But race one, they obviously finished 20 seconds closer. The 10th position rider finished 20 seconds closer to P1 than what they did last year. So they brought it 20 seconds quicker, if you like, with the new, the new rules. And that obviously is good. So race two, they have indeed got the results up. Race two, P10 was 27 seconds. So, yeah. Okay, maybe not PJ Jacobson in 10th position there, but in the first race, they were 20 seconds closer than what they were in 2017, which obviously is good because the riders were separated by, I think it was 10 seconds over the whole race. So a bit more closer kind of action, and it's bringing riders who you wouldn't normally expect up there. You have the Bali Racing Ducati, for example, of uh, Chavi Forez, fighting for the, the lead, beating the factory Ducatis. You have MV Augusta jumping in the uh, in the, the fight. They were in the side of the top 10, fighting for about fifth position before, obviously, Torres went off the circuit in race one and then had a crash with Laverty in race two. And then also BMW with Loris Baz. They are sort of getting getting the grips together and fighting for top 10s and that as well. So it's bringing more teams into the fight and also, as well, has helped Honda improve so they can just move up the pecking order a little bit and then obviously Yamaha they have more potential to get podiums and more competitive and with these new um electronics as well that they've got that can help uh, them even more and so basically in the case of bringing races closer it, it has worked but has it made it better we'll have to wait and see whether or not you know it has throughout the season so now then that's all the topics done little 10 minute run through on the topics uh, let us know down in the comments what you think about the topics and if you have any uh you know thoughts on those uh so race one let's quickly run through the grid for race one it was ray on pole by three thousandths of a second ahead of tom sykes and then cameo riding out the front row on the honda then it was the uh mv augusta of torres ahead of the barney racing ducati forest and then the first part of yamaha of alex lowe's uh, two tenths off the top time of Ray. Then it was Melandry heading the third row. Laverty in eighth position. And Chaz Davies rounding off the third row. Uh, three tenths behind Johnny Ray. So pretty close throughout qualifying. So the race. Let's quickly jump into this. Obviously Johnny Ray from pole position got the whole shot. Um, and led the race right up until the final corner. When Tom Sykes went up the inside of his teammate. And led all the way to turn three on lap two. When Ray got him back. And then basically, they repeated that situation on lap two. Sykes went up the inside at the final corner. Lap three at turn three, Ray then repaid the favour. And obviously, then started pulling away. Kamiya then got past uh, Sykes and kind of started just holding up a little bit, allowing Ray to just extend the gap a little bit. And it was then that's when you think, OK, is Ray kind of, you know going to dominate this championship again but obviously luckily he didn't Yamaha's then fought back through the field and they got back up to p7 he dropped right down to about p11 or p12 or something stupid he had an absolute shocking start pushed away back up to p7 and started having a fight with uh, the, the two teammates and also Laverty and I think Torres was in the mix as well then Torres obviously like I said earlier ran on at turn eight and slotted in behind the Aprilia of Laverty who was fighting both the Yamaha so that's when that fight started I was just on about Sykes then also got passed by Forez on the Barney Racing Ducati, who then passed Camia in a hectic turn three, with both of them riders, Camia and Forez, running off the track and switch back in off the track as they rejoined the circuit. It was all a bit um, a bit intense. Then we have Alex Lowe's. He moved up into P6 and then started chasing down Tom Sykes. And then, obviously, Lowe's and Sykes had a little battle, changing positions uh, after corner after corner, before eventually Yamaha got ahead of the Kawasaki rider. And then... Back at the front, Chaz Davis, he passed Camier on the second to last lap, managed to pull about eight, eight tenths to a second lead over the Honda before then crossing the line to take the win um, was Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray managed to cross the line, take the win, Forres in second position, and then Chaz Davis managed to get a third position at the end of that one. And going into race two, that means that Melandri only had a two-point lead in the championship over the Kawasaki rider Johnny Ray with Forres slotting into third position in the championship and it was all looking quite nice 
for the race two. So the race one results, Johnny Ray, Forrest Davies, Kamiya Lowe's getting the P5 ahead of Tom Sykes, Van der Mark in seventh, with Melandry down in eighth position. He had very bad stability issues throughout the race and just really struggled uh, with that Aruba.it Ducati. Laverty in ninth position with Torres rounding out the top 10 on the NBA Augusta. Loris Baz on the BMW in 11th. Samadori returning back to the paddock after his injury in Australia was P11. With, uh, P12, sorry, with Mercado in 13th. Ramos 14th. And top right, Razgatiloglu rounding out the field in top 5th. Well, ran out the points in 15th position. So, obviously, with that said... The race two grid was as followed. Obviously, it's all different. They base it off the race one results. So, P4 in race one, P1 on the grid, Leon Camia. P5 in race two, P2 on the grid, Alex Lowe's. P6 in race one, third on the grid, Tom Sykes. Fourth in the grid is Michael van der Mark after his seventh position with Melandry in uh, fifth position on the grid, eighth in the race one, Laverty in sixth, ninth in race one, and then it was Davis. In 7th, 3rd in race 1, Forres in 8th, 2nd in race 1, and the winner of race 1, Johnny Ray, starting in ninth position. So, it was all looking pretty entertaining, but it all started before the race even got on, because Andre Jezek, from the back of the grid, he got pulled off the grid. Uh, his bike obviously had an issue, he retired in the first race, obviously some issues going on there with the uh, the, the Kawasaki rider. But then Kamiya, he managed to get the whole shot. And Ray had a good start. He started ninth. He got up to P6 and then started having a bit of a battle with them. But then, obviously, uh, going into the turn three with the slipstream down the very long straight, the two Yamahas got past Kamiya. I think Kamiya was a little bit worried. He was just uh, kind of trying to just settle down into, into things. And the two Yamahas were able to pounce on that and managed to get the lead. Then they had a little bit of a scrap. Alex Lowe's and Van der Mark passing each other. Switched back in at turn three. A uh, couple of brave moves into turn nine and also a few into turn four and five as well. Uh, and then, obviously, Johnny Ray started just peeling through the, the field a little bit, passing Laverty. Um, Camille and Melandri also battled through turn nine as well during that. Um, but then there was, all of a sudden, the second KLT bike, Stikes, he started P3 on the front row and he dropped down to P9. And he just went backwards. He got right down to P15 at one point in the race. And it was a bit like, okay, what's going on here? Has he still got the brake issues that he had in race one? I don't think I touched on that. He had brake issues in race one. Has he still got them at the moment? But we'll move on to what it was a little bit later because... Whilst that was happening, there was a big battle with Ray, Melandres, Davis, Camia. Uh, after Ray's mistake, he went wide at the final corner and then all four riders pounced on Ray. And Ray dropped down to P8 after that, going into turn number one. Uh, but whilst all was that happening, Marco Melandri then um, got passed by Chaz Davis. Chaz Davis then broke away, tried to chase down the leading uh, riders. Uh, after running wide at the final corner, Ray then got passed by Melandri. He then finally got him back past and uh, carried on with his day, but he was making mistakes left, right, and centre, running wide, running off the track, and it was all a little bit entertaining. But whilst that uh, fight was going on, there was a fight a bit further back between Laverty and Torres. Unfortunately for them, it ended in tears because they both went down. Laverty got taken to the medical centre. Still, as of yet, nothing on his condition, so make sure you check on Twitter. There will probably be something up on there by the time this video goes out, so make sure you check on that. Um, then once that all kind of settled down, Chaz Davis managed to catch the two Yamahas, split them. So it was uh, Vandermark leading, Davis second, Lowe's in third. Before then, Ray running off the track again further behind and losing more time and then allowing Camia to then close back up to uh, Forrest and Ray and try and get in the mix there as well. Tom Sykes then came in the pits. It was, I believe, a suspension issue, something wrong with the front end, a serious uh, material failure, some, something on the front end of the bike. So we guess it's a suspension failure basically from what they were saying on tv the issue it is a, a kind of a suspension issue there um obviously whilst that was happening Chaz davis then got the lead of the race he moved up ahead of the patty yamaha rider michael van der mark before then the two riders kind of breaking away from alex lowe's in third who was breaking away from forrest in fourth um and then obviously it was just a little bit kind of boring from there we just had ray powering through from p6 to uh, the back of Forres into P5, that was. And then he got into P4 once he passed Forres. And then just kind of, kind of just, I don't know, really, just pulled away from him. So, yeah, I thought he was going to catch Lowe's, but he just wasn't close enough with three laps to go. Um, obviously, then Camia, P6, Melandri went wide. 
um, managed to get past him. Ray then managed to get up to fourth, like I briefly said. And then that was basically it. Chaz Davis just took the win ahead of Vandermark and Laverty. And as I breathe, uh, Lowe's even, I don't know why I said Laverty, because I was just reading here, Laverty uh, crashed. <laughs> I was just reading this through to make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, and uh, yeah, so first non win in Thailand for Kawasaki after Chaz Davis' win in race two. So that is pretty good. So race two results, we'll quickly go through that. Chaz Davis, like I said, win. Vandermark second. Lowe's in third, not Laverty. He crashed out. Uh, Ray in fourth, Forrest fifth, Camia in sixth position, so another good result for the Barney Ducati in fifth, and also the Red Bull Honda in sixth position, he was ahead of the factory Ducati in Melandri in seventh, a double Australian Grand Prix race winner, uh, Razgati Roglu in eighth position, Savadori in ninth, very good finish for um, Jacobson on the Triple M Honda, he managed to get a P10 ahead of Yoni Hernandez, who had a pretty good ride in P11 ahead of Baz, Ramos, and Jake Gagne was the final actual rider to finish. Only 14 riders out of the 19 who started finished the race uh, at the end of the Thailand Grand Prix in race number two. So championship standings, Jonathan Ray leads the way. He's on 69 points with Melandri in second position, just two points behind him. Chavi Forres, nine points off the leader in ninth. And then Chaz Davies, after a crash in Australia, he's in 57 points in fourth. Alex Lowe's in fifth. Michael van der Mark, just a few points off his teammate in sixth position. Then it's Tom Sykes and in seventh position with 43 points, two points off the back of the Yamaha of Michael van der Mark. Just one single point behind him, though, is the other Brit on the Honda, Leon Camio. Good start to the season of him. He's in eighth position with Loris Baz on the uh, Altair BMW in ninth position, 21 points to his name. With top back Resco Tadoglu rounding out the top 10 with 18 points. Then it's Laverty on 16 points. Torres on 14. Mercado on 13. Ramos on 12. Savadori in 11 points after missing the Australian Grand Prix. Um, Jake Gagne leading his fellow American PJ. So 9 points for Jake and uh, 8 points for PJ. And then as we look further down, we have Yoni Hernandez second to last. 5 points and Andre Josek one single point for him. If we look at the manufacturer standings, Ducati lead the way, 95 points on the board, 78 points for Kawasaki, 52 points for Yamaha, uh, 42 points for Honda, uh, 23 for Aprilia, 21 for BMW, and then MV Augusta rounding out that little uh, manufacturer's battle there in 7th position with 14 points. Now, so that was the story of the World Superbikes. Pretty entertaining race, to be honest. A few fights throughout the field, Ray running wide, people really ride left, right and centre. And uh, it was all down to, basically, that kind of last corner mistakes that Ray made that could have potentially held him back from taking the win. So that was that. But earlier on in the day, this morning, we had the World Super, Bi uh, World Super Sport race before the World Superbike race. So we'll quickly run through that. The podium was uh, as followed. It was Krumanaka who managed to take the win just ahead of Lucas Mahia side by side on the line. Managed to take the win ahead of Federico Caracasulo. So that was the podium for them, the championship stand is now after that. Joint lead for Randy Krumenaka and Lucas Mahias. 45 points each for them. Federico Caracasulo in third position, 29 points. So the two riders, we've got Krumenaka and Mahias. They are kind of far in front of everybody else. Um, actually, the P1, P2 joint on points. P3 and P4 joint on points. Because uh, Sandra Cortese also has 29 points to his name in fourth position. Rafael de Rosa, he's in uh, a pretty good fifth position with 19 points on the MV Augusta. With Luke Stapleford on the Triumph, he's in 17 points in sixth position. Nicky Tooley uh, on the Honda, he's 12 points to his name in seventh. Um, Warakon in 11th. Gar Radinger. I think that's how you pronounce his name in 11th. Anthony West in 10th position with, uh, oh no, 9th, sorry, for granted, 11 points on the board. He's joint, um, joint 8th with Warwick Horn. Anthony West, uh, 10 points for his name. Jules Clues out after crashing out the lead in the World Supersport race today. He's down in 11th, 9 points on the board. Ratapat Wheeler are in 12th, 8 points on the board. And I believe he was a wild card for this weekend, I believe. Uh, Kyle Smith in 13th position, 8 points on the board with Badovini on the 2nd of May Augusta down in 14th ahead of uh, Loris Cresson. He's got 6 points. Jack Kennedy who came in to replace the second Triumph Friday after he had an injury. He managed to get himself an incredible 4 points on his debut in World Super Sport with the Triumph team. Very good stuff for him. Uh, Chrysler, another a wild card for this weekend. He got three points on the board. He's actually joined with Keenan Sufwoglu. He missed the Thailand weekend due to injury. He had a shocking Australian Grand Prix, finishing like way down the order, in like 13th position or something. 
And now, obviously, missing that Thailand Grand Prix down in 18th with three points. Akubo managed to get two points uh, on the board after the first two races crashed today on the last lap on the last corner. And then Top Boris uh, in then 20th position with one single point. So that's the World Super Sport uh, championship standings. If we go to the manufacturer standings real quick, Yamaha lead the way 50 points, and Augusta 19 points, Triumph in third with 17 points, Honda in fourth with 15 points, and Kawasaki uh, 14 points for them. So there we go. I think that is it. So that was the round two of the Motul FIM World Superbike Championship. So there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe. Uh, let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below and we will be back for another one when we get to Aragon. So until then, thank you for watching and goodbye.